Hi, I'm Matt Mellis. I'm an aerospace engineer for NASA, and I worked on the shuttle program uh, for a good number of years. And I'm here with my uh, colleague today, Kevin Burke, who participated in the acquisition and deployment of uh, the 30 or so clips that you're going to see in just a few minutes. Now, um, and Kevin, thanks for being here today. <laughs> Glad to be here, Matt. <laughs> uh, what, what you're going to see is uh, what I consider to be the best of the best, state-of-the-art imagery on both film and high-definition video uh, that the Space Shuttle program is capable of producing today. And uh, not only does it serve a technical purpose, um, and we'll get into a lot of that detail as we get into the, uh, the movies here, but it also uh, serves as an enormous inspirational and educational aspect uh, for, uh, for all of NASA's stakeholders. There's a number of intents that we have for this production, and one of them is to pay tribute and commemorate the shuttle program, which has essentially been a 30-year program, and it's nearing completion as we uh, go to final print with this production. We also want to pay tribute to the men and women that made all of this imagery possible over the years of different missions and launches that we've had. And also to uh, give a view that not very many people see outside the NASA family of these fantastic pictures that are used largely for engineering purposes uh, and to let everyone on the outside of the NASA family uh, have insight as to, um, to what goes on with the shuttle when it launches. I think this is a very moving uh, set of clips that you're about to see. We're opening here with this uh, somewhat stylized view of one of the launch sequences that actually is going to play out in the in the upcoming clips. And uh, I've got a little soft focus on it and uh, thought we would open it up with a, a couple of fun facts about the shuttle. It really is an amazing piece of equipment. It has a phenomenal amount of fuel that it burns over the eight minutes uh, during its trip to orbit. And when they get up there, um, in that short eight minutes, they're going about five miles a second, which is a pretty spectacular achievement for a piece of machinery. So uh, this is how it all happens. This is how the, the, uh, the machine does its job, and uh, the film speaks volumes. Uh, this uh, is camera view E19. Uh, we commonly refer to this as Echo 19. And it's a 16 millimeter camera with a 10 millimeter um, field of view for the uh, lens, the focal length of the lens. And it's running at 400 frames a second. Uh, so the effective shutter speed is really 1 1 twelve hundredth of a second. Yeah, that's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, this is all a slow motion event. Uh, and basically, you're going to see the six seconds prior to launch of the vehicle. Uh, as the space shuttle main engines turn on. Now the purpose of this camera, uh, they all have different purposes. These, most of these, uh, if not all of these cameras that you're going to see in this production are engineering uh, cameras to look for different engineering aspects of, of the launch process. And so the purpose of this one is to check to make sure ignition is going off okay, which is what you're seeing here. Main engine start is just happening and you can see the engines are starting one at a time. Uh, this particular camera looks at uh, engines number one and three, right? Is that what this is? Yep. And um, and so you can see them they're starting to fire up. Uh, those sparkers that you see are, are there to make sure that any unburned hydrogen gets ignited before it floats around and collects in some place where it can ignite later and cause problems. Uh, again, you're seeing the engines sort of turn on here. And so uh, we're roughly coming into about five seconds before liftoff. The computers are checking and validating that everything's A-OK. -okay. And uh, there's a little bit of a, of, of a pitch over that the whole vehicle does as a consequence of these these engines thrusting off the center of gravity and when the whole vehicle snaps back and is straight up in the air uh, the engines uh, or the uh, boosters ignite and the whole thing takes off. Great, great photography here. I mean you can see all this flow phenomenon going on inside the engines. Now the space shuttle main engines are burning hydrogen and oxygen and I'll talk about some of the fun facts about that later on in some of the other clips that you're going to see but here you can see the engines have stabilized and uh, everything is A-OK -okay. and uh, in just a few moments you'll see the boosters fire off. Um, did we talk about the time code? I can't remember. So, mm -hmm. it, 
No, we, we haven't talked about the time code. The time code uh, that you'll see, uh, the LED display on the right-hand side is actually positioned between the two sprockets um, on the 16 millimeter frame. And uh, the time code is UTC time code. It's an IRB format. And you'll see that it's uh, 21 hours, so being UTC at 5.02 p.m. local time, uh, 2 minutes, 11 seconds. And the uh, three uh, digits that are moving in the upper right-hand corner uh, would be representing a thousandth of a second. The solid number one, um, the second digit from the top, is uh, indicating the synchronization of the camera is, is more of a technical parameter. Um, and that is uh, on every camera to synchronize the field of view, to syn synchronize the time. This is pretty cool. You can see the, some of the oxygen, that, that cloud of uh, vapor there was from the oxygen uh, fuel umbilical. Uh, of course, the solid rocket boosters have now uh, ignited and the whole vehicle is lifting off the pad. And uh, you can see sort of the glory of this moment. I mean, there's an enormous amount of fuel being burned. Uh, one little thing that I love is if you look at the sky in the background, and this was a very clear day. These pictures were, were selected or these in, mo uh, movies were selected because of the, the, the wonderful photography that we got on this day. And you can see the sky deep into this dark blue. And that's because, as, uh, as Kevin will talk later on, that we got into uh, color correction that we do post, uh, post launch to make sure that we're capturing all of these, uh, uh, the events that are going on, all of the flow events. So here the vehicle is uh, clearing the pad and um, we're, we're on our way. This view that you're seeing here is, uh, is camera E8 or Echo 8 and it's a 16 millimeter camera with uh, a 10 millimeter lens. Yeah, you can see the boosters now coming off the pad and uh, one of the amazing things that a lot of folks don't know about the shuttle is bolted to the mobile launch platform is it's basically through four bolts on each solid rocket booster and the intent of these cameras is to watch that bolt which is an explosive uh, nut bolt arrangement and uh, the bolt weighs about 100 pounds I should say and uh, these nuts fracture and the bolts uh, slap down into a holder that you're actually sort of seeing in the foreground here and they literally release the vehicle from the pad and allow it to uh, to take off so for obvious reasons we have a camera on each one of these explosive uh, hold down posts and uh, to make sure that they're operating uh, they're a critical aspect to the launch process we want to make sure that they're operating good so you can see that puff of smoke coming out and actually if you want to put the uh, remote on a frame by frame uh, stop uh, action, you can actually see the flash as it explodes. Uh, now, Kevin, here, here's where you guys really did a fantastic job of, of uh, capturing the, the detail in the plume through this automatic aperture on the cameras. You want to talk about that a bit? Sure. Uh, many of the 16-millimeter uh, cameras that are on the MLP and pad structure have a, an automatic exposure control. It's the only real way to, to keep the, uh, the exposure, uh, the high dynamic range exposure from uh, pre-ignition of the SRBs uh, through, through the, uh, the liftoff out of the frame of view. Uh, so the camera has a basically an automatic exposure. Right. Now look at the sky on the left uh, thing and see how it gets dark actually on both sides. You can see how it turns that deep blue. That's the automatic aperture in action right there, right? Allowing you to see the detail in, yeah. the, in the pad structure and also in the flame. Yeah. I mean, it, when you see a launch in real life, you, the, the, you can't see any detail with the naked eye in the plume. It's just like looking into the, the sun almost. It's so bright. We can see some of the water from the launch pad. There's a cooling water that comes out. We'll talk about that later that's splashing onto this quartz. Uh, protective glass that the camera's behind. Of course, they're in these explosion-proof uh, containers, right, to keep, the, keep the cameras safe and sound. The, uh, no yeah. cameras were harmed in this uh, in the making of this movie. <laughs> That's right. The cameras are in an explosion-proof box, uh, which is nitrogen purged, and uh, the quartz glass on the front protects the lens um, in, in most cases. There are some cases where there's damage, and if that's the case, the lenses will be repolished, reground, or, or whatever's necessary to bring them back into optimal condition. Well, at this uh, next view coming up is uh, Echo 18 or Camera 18, and it's a 10 millimeter lens. Uh, and looking at the TSM or the uh, tail service ma mast uh, carrier disconnect. Yeah, the the umbilicals. Uh, there's one on each side of the orbiter, one for the liquid oxygen fueling and one for the liquid hydrogen fueling. Those are primary purposes. You can see there's a lot of other instrumentation on these things uh, in feed lines. But uh, these cameras, uh, their intention is to make sure we get good retraction of this. And there's actually uh, a huge 20,000 pound mass that pulls these things inside the tail service mast uh, for the door to slam shut and protect them from the um, 
the hostile environment on the outside. Now these umbilicals are about four feet wide by six foot tall, so you don't really get a sense of scale when you're looking at these in these movies. Uh, but they're as big as, a, as an average size human being, so they're uh, quite large. One of the uh, interesting photographic challenges that we run into in uh, photographing uh, the uh, TSM carrier disconnect from the inside of the uh, tail service mast is once that door closes, it's pitch black in there. So there's a set of uh, series of uh, tungsten lamps that provide illumination and the vibrations, the tremendous amount of vibrations that are in induced during the, uh, the, during the liftoff uh, really rattle those uh, lights and keeping them um, from uh, having those bulbs break is, is, has been quite a challenge. In fact, uh, they are in the process of uh, changing those lights over to uh, the new LED arrays that provide um, more stability and uh, less uh, frequency of um, having the bulbs go out um, before the film yeah, runs they're, out. Yeah, they're a lot more robust to that kind of environment. Okay, Matt, this is uh, Echo 001, um, and this is uh, one of the four cameras on the edges of the MLP deck. This is on the this camera happens to be on the northeast corner of the MLP deck, and it's a 16 millimeter camera, as all the ones on the MLP are, and 10 millimeter focal length. It's a wide angle view, and the effect of shutter speed is about one twelve hundredth of a second. For our viewers, uh, you can see that we pulled a little bit away uh, back from the vehicle. Now we're taking a little bit of a wider view. There's the SSMEs just firing off there, and you can see the plume in the background uh, growing. In fact, if you look carefully uh, against the plume there, you can see a couple of cameras. Um, why don't you mention what those are, Kevin? Yeah, those are some MoTV cameras, operational television cameras that are used for surveillance of the of the vehicle. They're, they they uh, and are piped back live to the uh, launch control complex. The signals. So the SSMEs are firing. You can actually see the launch tower on the right hand side of the screen. And uh, again, they go on for about six seconds. Computers are making sure that everything's working. And at uh, T minus zero, those boosters are going to fire, and uh, you'll see a big puff of smoke come out of the flame trench there, and it'll get sucked back down in uh, as the boosters come off the pad. And these two sort of uh, structures, uh, one standing just to the left of the left booster and one standing just to the right of the right booster, are called rainbirds. And uh, there's some piping uh, sort of flat against the launch pad as well that sort of connect all these things together. There, there go the boosters firing. And uh, all of this fresh water, 300,000 gallons to be exact, uh, comes pouring out of those rainbirds and uh, onto the launch pad to deaden the acoustic noise and cool the pad down. So that's where the water comes from in some of these camera shots. And here you can see the, uh, the AEC, um, the automatic exposure control on the cameras, uh, taking over as the, uh, the booster uh, plume uh, comes into view and allows to see, um, the AEC allows you to see the, um, the detail both in the plume as well as in the uh, vehicle and the structure itself. And you can also see very good detail on the, the deck of the MLP. Now, uh, we talk a little bit about the purpose of each one of these cameras, and um, this one is to look for some structural anomalies uh, on the vehicle, some thermal uh, insulation failures we might have on the tiles or the blankets, etc., and uh, how the water is getting dispersed on the pad. And also, we're looking at uh, debris. And actually, you can see here that we've got quite a bit of debris in the field, and debris is a big concern.